And we are back with some more Calgary Flames franchise mode in FHM9. And the last one, we started year number seven. We had a bit of a shaky start. However, we are 16, nine and one now, meaning we are third in the Pacific Division. Things I'm concerned about at the moment, my lay not doing very well. In three games played, only an 867 save percentage. Dabood's doing just fine. He recovered from a shaky start. 912 save percentage now. And as seen by our player stats, we could definitely be scoring more. And it's not the worst thing in the world, especially considering our defense has been much better and our goaltending has been much better. But still definitely something to keep an eye on. I really want Elfrey to get going because we know he has it in him. He usually gets somewhere around 60 points per season. But as of right now, he's only on pace for 35 or 40. Really need him to get going a bit there. Who's he on the line with? Antolovsky and Creech. As long as we're winning, there's no reason to... You know, mess with anything, but definitely far from ideal at the moment. I would like it if scoring could pick it up. So we're going to see what happens here in the month of December. I think I'll actually, yeah, I'll send my lay down. He's going on waivers. I doubt anyone will claim him. And then we're going to take Sorkvist up here and see what he can do. Ooh, nine to three loss against Vegas. What in the world? That was not pretty. And who was in goal that game? It was a combination of Debu and Sorkvist. So Debu started, it looks like. Yeah, that's a <laughs> it's a shaky game for Debu. I don't know why it took seven goals for Coach to finally pull him. Ooh, another rough loss to Seattle. Losing some key games here. LA, another loss to a Pacific Division team. All right, January 1st here, 22-14-4. We're third in the Pacific Division, sixth in the league somehow. Let's take a look at the stats. Oh, man, Sarkvist, <laughs> 8.50 save percentage in four games played. Man, I thought I had backup goaltender all sorted with my lay, but now all of a sudden we can't... <laughs> <laughs> we can't find the right uh the right guy here. I guess I'll give Amaya another chance because Dorcas so far in four games played, not ideal. I'm gonna send him back down. We might honestly have to trade for a backup goaltender if it continues like this. And then how's Debu doing? A 906? Yeah, definitely not great, at least compared to when we last checked with that 912 save percentage that he had. So hopefully he can get back up there. On defense, we're doing just fine with defensive grades. Let's see how we're doing scoring-wise. 35 points for Pegamagabo, 30 for Petal, 29 for Coronado, 25 for Wright, 23 for Brisson, 22 for Alfring, 22 for Sheets and Bernier, 19 for Creech, 18 for Meehan, 17 for Glockner. Yeah, okay. So we are just kind of lacking firepower right now. Pegamagabo with 19 goals and then Petal with 17, but then it drops down to Brisson with 11 <laughs> and Elfring with 11 as well. Yeah, that's not good. Honestly, I think part of the issue might be we have way too many two-way forwards <laughs> i think we might need just need a pure offensive guy here elfring's a two-way forward antolovsky is a two-way forward pegamaga was a goal scorer according to his role but i know he plays a defensive game so honestly i count him as more of a two-way forward yeah i think who's really fallen off the, here though is Brisson because he had 68 points last year now at 34 years of age he's got 23 is on pace for like 45, only 11 goals. Yeah, Brisson's starting to fall off, unfortunately. Not like he's a franchise player either. He didn't even start his career here. He wasn't here until he's 27, so it's not like, you know, be trading away someone who spent their entire career here. I might consider trading Brisson because the way he's been trending has not been pretty, especially not this year. And last year he was great, but this year so far, we're already almost halfway through this year. It's been... A very slow decline for him and it's starting to look a little worse so in fact i'm going to check the trade block and see what's out there nashville has tomek on the trade block tobias tomek pretty good offensive winger i don't know if i'm going to be able to trade for that though that might be a bit much so i'm going to keep looking yeah out of all the players on the trade block that guy from nashville tomek definitely stood out the most to me but the issue is i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to trade for him without giving up an arm and a leg I'd have to go two first. I'm not, I'm not willing to do that at this point. We already gave up our two first to San Jose back in the day. <laughs> so I, I don't think so. I think I would rather trade Brees on for a draft pick, honestly. Even though we do have some young players here, we are starting to get to the point where we are going to have to start refreshing our prospect cupboard. Although any team that we trade Brees on to probably wouldn't net us a great prospect with their draft pick right so i'm not going to trade him right now but when it gets closer to the trade deadline and if he's still performing at this rate then i think we're probably gonna have to move him besides when it gets to that point we'll have a better read on most likely where each team is gonna finish in the standings and it might make it a little bit easier to trade for a draft pick or harder depending on where, what we're looking for 
Oh man, we are now 26, 22, and 4 on January 27th. Let's take a look at the stats, see what's going wrong. And we just need a we need a backup goaltender. I don't know what happened to Milo this year. <laughs> he was so good last year with that 930 save presented all of a sudden an 856. So we've had to rely on Dabu for 48 games out of the past like 50 something. So he's played almost every game so far. And then scoring wise, yeah, Pegamagamo with 41, 40 for Coronado, 38 for Pedal. 32 for Brisson, 30 for Wright, and we're like 52 games in. Yeah, no, this, we're not scoring enough. We are not scoring enough. Let's see the team stats. Goals for our brain. We're, I'm surprised we're 13th in the league with 3.15. I, I thought for sure we were going to be like somewhere down here near where Anaheim is. And power play, abysmal as ever, 15.3. Uh, penalty kill is at an 81.1. We also need someone else to consistently get assists besides just Coronado. Only problem is, you know, that kind of player is going to be very, very difficult to trade for, especially for us, given that we are lacking in extra assets, I should say. Because right now, every player of value is someone I don't want to trade. I don't want to trade my draft picks this year because we already traded two of them earlier, and we do need to replenish our prospects a little bit. So that's just not in the cards. We don't have the extra assets to be doing that. So let's see. Now that I think of it. Who's expiring this year? Antolovsky, Creech, Coronado, Brisson, Mook Madulin. Those are all the big names. All right, so Brisson picked it up. He's got 32 points now in 49 games played. But I still might want to consider his future, especially depending on what he's asking for here in the resign stage. 7.9? I mean, it's only one year, but still it's a bit much, especially for the kind of production he puts up. What about Coronado? What does he want? 4.3? Yeah, that, he's worth that for sure. I don't know about three years, probably not three years for Coronado, but if he maintains somewhere around that salary, I'll do that for two years. So I'll start at 4.4 for two years. Oh, really? Okay. He's not picky about that. Cool. I will absolutely do that for him. But as for Brisson, like that's, that's just a bit much, especially when, you know, we got guys like Creech and Antilovsky coming up. What do they want? Creech wants four by four, start at 3.8 for four years. Beautiful. Uh, Antolovsky, 3.6 for five years. Start at 3.3 for five years. All right, how about we meet it at 3.5? There it is. Yeah, I don't know if a Brisson extension is in the cards here. We might just have to trade him for draft picks. This is weird. This happened again. Skyler Grieve, who I offered 1.4 million to. He's a prospect of ours currently in the AHL. I gave him 1.4 because he was asking for 1.45. I decided to take him down a bit. And he's like, 1.35. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll do that. Doesn't really make much sense, but I'll do it. <laughs> Taking one for the team. He's, he's asking for less money. He's a team player. Character guy. <laughs> Mooka Madulin wants 7.7 .7 for one year. I don't know. That on top of Brisson is a bit much for two players who are both 34 years of age. We're already at 77 million as it is. So with the raises that Creech and Antolovsky are getting, that'd be pushing it. <laughs> In fact, I think we'd be over the cap at that point if we re-signed both Brisson and Mookie Madulin. So certainly some decisions to be made this upcoming trade deadline. Wait, I just thought of something. What's our Team Harmony looking like? Okay, Harmony is good. I, I thought for a second that we might have had some, you know, Team Harmony issues given how poorly we've been performing lately, but it appears not. All right, at least that's, that's not a possibility. But unfortunately, we are currently sitting outside of a playoff spot behind Vegas and Edmonton for the wild card. And then LA is in a third divisional spot. So we could still catch them for sure. But we're going to have to start winning now. I'm going to go week by week up to the trade deadline. Because as of right now, we have been on quite a slide. Oh, no. <laughs> Brisson's injured now. How long? One to two weeks. Oh, that's like just coming up on the trade deadline. Oh, that's rough. Oh, boy. We are on March 1st. 31, 27, and 5. 67 points. Sixth in the Pacific Division. Currently four points outside the playoffs. And it's, we just, we keep going back and forth. Like we've lost a lot recently. I mean, February, I believe we went 500. January was terrible. That's, let's see, one and two, four and eight, four and nine in January. January was terrible for us. And then December wasn't all that great either. Yeah, we, we've just been back and forth all season. But we're coming up in the trade deadline here. So we're going to have to make a decision on guys like Brisson and Mookamadoulin. Here's the thing though. We can't exactly go out and trade for someone who's going to, 
help with the scoring because like i said before every player of value that we have is someone who i want to hold on to for now and the future and all of our veterans are getting to the point where they're starting to really diminish in value to the point where they wouldn't really fetch anyone too fantastic you know so i'm really thinking either prospects or draft picks are the way to go for a brisson trade because we desperately need to replenish our prospect pool unfortunately i don't know how much quality uh, someone like brisson's gonna net us at this point in his career let's see colorado's in a good position wonder if they'd be willing to give up a prospect or two i mean they have matt phillips but i doubt they would be moving on from him easily new jersey's also in a good position maybe they'd be willing Eh, not really much i'm interested in there we could get there first if brisson would even fetch that no and they can't even accept the salary either that's another issue with us pittsburgh is also in a good position they will never accept this offer they can't add this much salary to the payroll Oh boy, this, uh, something tells me we're not going to get as much for a breeze on it as we would like. Winnipeg, you're my last hope. I, I'm not interested in any of their prospects, and I, I don't think they'd even be able to take a trade like this, because <laughs> their current cap space is apparently at negative 7.7, .7, so they wouldn't even be able to afford breeze on without giving up a lot of cap in return. We might be stuck with them, I'm not going to lie. We might be stuck with them here, because <laughs> there's not a lot of teams that can even afford him and there's also not a lot that i'm interested in but at the same time all right good he's gotten down to 5.3 for two years i still wouldn't do two years for him though if anything i give him one year you go one year at five mil i'll do it no looks like we're a little far off what about 5.1 no he's even coming down on his price he really wants that two years let's see what could i even get for Brisson? got five offers uh really not much yeah, all these offers are terrible. They consist of sevenths and depth players. <laughs> I'm saying no to all of those. Honestly, it might just be better to hold on to him. <laughs> just hold on to him for the playoff run. Because if if we make the playoffs, because there doesn't seem to be any team that can even afford him. And the ones that can't afford him, it doesn't seem like we're going to be able to get much out of them. But what we really need here, let's be real. What we need here is a backup goaltender. Because my lay hasn't been getting it done this year. We already tried Sorkfist, that didn't work. <laughs> Dabu is starting to fall off with the amount of games he's had to play in a row. He's played 57 out of our 63 games. He's had hardly any rest so far this year. Like, we, we need to get this man some help. <laughs> so, I th yeah, I think backup goaltender's got to be the top priority here. I suppose we could go after Dustin Wolf in free agency, a two-star goaltender, 34 years of age. I mean, at this point, what do you have last year? 852 save percentage with the Toronto Maple Leafs last year. Or actually, no, that was this year. Looks like Toronto released him. And the year before, he had a 913. So he just fell off. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Not, not Dustin Wolf. It doesn't seem like we're going to be able to do much about the back of goaltender situation. Like, I'm just looking around. There's really just nothing. Nothing that would be worth the trade anyway. <laughs> and then there's some teams like Carolina who have one and a half star ability goaltenders in Sfozil. And then there's teams like Colorado that have... A four-star goaltender and a three-and-a-half-star goaltender. What is the need for that? <laughs> LA as well. And Montreal. And New York. Why do you have a five-star goaltender and a three-and-a-half-star goaltender? And and one of them's 29, the other is 24. Move on from one of them. <laughs> that is definitely a trend I'm noticing, is that there are certain teams that like to hog the goaltenders. Ottawa as well, <laughs> with with Leanders and Cavazzi. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking around and there's really not much for us. Like, we're in a position where making a trade to improve our roster now would definitely hurt us within the coming years. And the players that are of value, I just don't want to give up. So, I, I mean, it sucks. I, I, I want to make a move here, but there's really not much to be done without breaking our future. Or just going into a full-on rebuild, which I don't exactly want to do. Not right now, anyway. At least not after winning the Stanley Cup two years in a row. I would like to try to make a push for the playoff spot. So while I'm not going to be making any trades here, I am going to change up the roster a little bit. I'm going to be sending down a few forwards, primarily Amir Kanov, who has not been impressive this year. Only three points in 23 games played. Send him to the AHL, and I will be calling up Skylar Grieve, who we signed earlier to a NHL contract for next season. He's a two-and-a-half-star ability, three-star potential, or three-and-a-half-star potential, I should say. Has a decent amount of points down there in the AHL so far, so I figured we may as well see what he can do at the NHL level. I mean, it's, it can't hurt at this point. And he's our top prospect, apparently, as well. I might also call up Pagumanov at some point, see what he can do instead of maybe Tilly. Because he has a higher star ability than him 
it looks overall better than Tilly. Yeah, he's above Tilly even on the depth chart for right wingers. So I'm going to send Tilly down. He's going to have to go through waivers. That's fine. And call up a Guminov. So at least we're getting some younger pieces on board here through means of the AHL. So yeah, let's let's just carry out the rest of the season and see what happens, honestly. Like, that's probably the best thing we could do for this team at this point without just completely destroying the team. And if that means we have to end up releasing guys like Brisson and Mukamadoula at the end of the season, then so be it. But I just want, I feel like this team deserves one last shot at the Stanley Cup. So the, literally the best option here is just to stay the way we are and move on and, and hope for the best. Oh no, don't tell me. Doug Elfring is injured. How long? All right, it doesn't look that bad. One or two weeks. All right. Not terrible. Could have been better, obviously, but at least it's not the rest of the season. All right, so the regular season has come to an end. We are... 42, 31, and 9 on April 11th. We are fourth in the division, and we have clinched the wild card. We squeaked into the playoffs. We just barely squeaked into the playoffs. We had the exact same record as Edmonton. If we had one less win, we would be out. <laughs> we'd be where St. Louis is right now. Oh, man. That was awfully close, but we did, in the end, make the playoffs. <laughs> so, not trading anyone paid off. We'll see how much, though. We'll see if this actually translates into a third consecutive Stanley Cup. I hope so. Let's check out the player stats. Pega Magabo with 82 points in 79 games played. 44 goals and 75 for Coronado. 59 for Wright. 54 for Petal. 47 for Borisan. 45 for Elfring and Sheets. 43 for Antolovsky. 38 for Byram and Muse. 37 for Creech and Bernier. 30 for Fortman. 29 for Glockner. 25 for Meehan. 24 for Mooney, 23 for Chavetti, and 12 for Hinton. And you have 9 for Mukamadulin, 3 for Agumanov in 14 games, and 1 for Grieve in 12 games. And in 73 games played, Jeremy Debu with the 902 save percentage and 4 shutouts. Ooh, this might be a rough playoffs, I'm not going to lie. 10 games played for my lay, 888. That's uh, unfortunate compared to where we was last season. Team stats, goals for per game. We are actually 6th in the league with a 3.38. Goals against per game, we are 22nd with a 3.18. Power play, we are 25th with a 16.9. And an 81% on the penalty kill. That is 16th in the league. So, I mean, I guess we made the playoffs in the end, so I can't complain. But we are going to have to give it our all here in these playoffs if we want a third championship in a row. So I think with that, one thing's off here. And the next one, we get to the Year 7 playoffs with your Calgary Flames.